okay so welcome one and all so today this is a session we are going to okay once again sorry okay good day one and all so today the session that is organized by the institution of innovation council is going to deal with the topic that is how to plan for startup the legal and ethical steps and to educate us on this topic we have with us miss vaibhavi rani who is an assistant professor from kare college of law madgaon so now i hand over uh, to miss vaibhavi rani who can start this particular session go ahead vaibhavi thank you assistant professor mohit uh, so as stated earlier the session that i am going to take today is titled how to plan for startup legal and ethical steps okay so uh, the session is aimed at young entrepreneurs okay planning to start their uh, startups what are the legal basic legal knowledge that one should know what are the legal steps that one should adopt is the aim and is the objective of this session now how the session would be divided or how are we going to proceed with this session is firstly we are going to understand the meaning of what is a startup uh, the definition of startup that is then the next step would be to understand the process how you as an entrepreneur you have the inspiration to start this startup but what is the first step that is what we are going to see and only after that do we come to the legal and the ethical steps in the legal steps we are only going to look at the preliminary, preliminary knowledge that one should know as as uh, the basics of law that one should uh, as a budding entrepreneur as a budding founder of a startup okay so uh, we would now start with the understanding of what is a startup now various definitions in law you would see that various definitions of startup uh, has been given the first one is that a, a, a startup is a private company which is incorporated under the companies act of 2013 and recognized as a, as a startup in accordance with the notification issued by the department of industrial policy and promotion now this is a very technical definition further it has been defined notification by the ministry of commerce and industry on 19 february 2019 as an entity that is headquartered in india in 19 and has an annual turnover of less than rupees 100 crores okay so these are the two definitions that Different definitions, if you might say, we have been hearing this word startup quite recently. It's it's a lot in news. It's a lot in the mainstream. However, the India has been prevalent for decades. It has given rise to several industries and has uh, uh, has helped the Indian economy in its varied phase of evolution. In the recent times, this concept of startup ecosystem has garnered more significant uh, significant attention because of the number of entrepreneurial initiatives which have been taken up, and also because of the initiative of the government to promote the startup culture. So, as you all might have heard this at some point of time, Startup India is a flagship initiative of the government of India, which is intended to build a strong ecosystem that is conducive for the growth of startup businesses to drive sustainable. economic growth and generate large scale employment opportunities now on on uh, january 16 2016 the honorable prime minister of india had formally launched this initiative of startup india stand up india and in line with that 16 january is celebrated or is commemorated as the national startup day so this is about startup what is a startup what is the basis of the the concept of startup india and with that now we will come to the next important topic that is the second phase of our session that is how to come up with the idea of a startup or what is the process okay, so the process can be divided broadly in four uh, phases the first phase is that of inspiration now i believe most of you are already at this phase and that is why you have you inspired to start a startup you inspired to be an entrepreneur and that is why you are watching this current session now with this inspiration what do you do you try to formulate an idea now idea we will see how you get your idea from where you get your idea how do you develop that idea after your idea is formulated the next step is protect your idea we will see the uh, the ip regime that is the intellectual property regime how it helps to protect your idea and what is the significance of protecting your idea 
And finally, after doing this all three steps, you come to the hard work, the perspiration part, wherein you work hard on your idea, you make your dreams come true, you make your startup come true. Okay, so the first point that we are going to address is idea. Where do you get your idea from? Yes, today you want to, uh, to, to start a startup, but where do you start from, right? is completely ethnal work it is a, a result of an of the imagination of the author now your idea your startup can come out of your imagination as well the next uh, source of your idea can be literature read about books uh, read read books read uh, research papers read works of scholars and you might chance upon something uh, which which inspires you which makes you work right uh, you can uh, read uh, this sci-fi novels which have this ideas of time uh, turning machines and uh, other other kinds. The next idea, the source of your idea can be research. Okay, so you uh, work on something, you try to uh, develop something, and that is what your research is basically. At this point of time, you have some basis. Okay, when, when you research on a particular idea, you have some knowledge, some prelim preliminary knowledge about what you want to do. And based on that, you as pretty much food, you know, when when. Ingredients that she was supposed to put. So she substituted that. creation that is a brand. doesn't matter read your mr we talk with our colleagues we talk with our friends uh, we will have a, a startup to tell you honestly i have had multiple ideas startup we wanted to start up a, a, a boutique of, of legal in, in the state of Goa. So to be having such discussions with your friends. So conscience are a very good for coming up with an idea. You can idea for your startup from. Besides this, there are this worth of source for very idea. Please Research, read more. That is where you can ideas from. Important point after you get is the time. Time is of course in our daily life, our in, in our professional life. do impulsively hello mohit am i audible 
Yes, yes. Okay. Is my screen visible to you? Yes. Okay, thank you. So as I was saying, I was speaking about uh, the idea creation, the quality and your time. They need to be proportional. You, you must not hurry into your startup. So as you can see, the, the place, the novel, the peak at novelty, that is where you, you must invest your time. That is where you must take the first step for your startup. However, that is the first practical step that you're supposed to take when it comes to legal formalities and everything. But your... your Diffusion. Now, what is diffusion? Which a new innovation or a new product that you come up with is communicated over some certain period of time to the party. Okay, now the important. Now, idea creation is basically how you create your idea. Okay. What our idea? Whereas idea is how much time does you to diffuse that out to send that idea or your, you know, or your product into the market? Okay, so as you can see, the tipping point that is when you should, should your, your idea, your startup should pick, uh, start picking. Okay, so the first when, you, when the curve starts, that is when you as an innovator are in the face of idea three. Then there would be some alters, usually your friends and family uh, on whom you try out or start up your products or your, your services. And as you in the market. So that is really about idea creation and idea diffusion. Your time is of essence. Yeah. Ruminate over it. Take your own time uh, and proceed with the uh, accumulating your idea in time. That this is the one. This idea that you have been again that you must take into consideration the fact of your idea. And the time is as you go further uh, on this. Just immediately do it. Then it's not a priority. It is not going to yield you a lot of returns. Uh, try to focus somewhere else. Try to develop it more if possible. The next is uh, where the impact is low but it will re require a lot of time for you. Maybe you, your 30s or your 20s would be spent in just developing that uh, startup. Now, if that is the case, just forget about it. We will keep it for, uh, we will develop it further. So then th the next is as the impact increases and the time redu reduces, the impact on the society and the impact on you, if it is higher and the time which is required for you to develop this startup is less, it's not, uh, minimum, but yes, comparatively, it is less. Of time, you have to develop it. You have to develop this idea. Then, in such a scenario, uh, it's a it's a good idea. It's a good startup that you can come up with, but for long term. So it depends on your objective, your goals, your purpose, uh, and which idea and what kind of idea and what kind of time you have with yourself uh, to invest. So based on that, you can determine whether a particular idea, a particular idea for your startup is the one. Okay, so that with that, we now move towards the concept of intellectual property, the protection part. Now, what is intellectual property? We all know about property. Property is something which we can, uh, uh, we, which we associate with land, a flat or a house or even to that extent, your valuable jewelry, your diamonds, and your gold. But is that all the property that we can think of? What about your uh, creative work? What about the, the, the efforts 
of your uh, uh, creation or your, your mental activity what about those that is something which is invaluable as well it is called intangible property something which you cannot uh, touch or you cannot feel by your senses but it yields you results and that is called intellectual property intellectual property can be divided broadly into uh, five categories here patents trademark copyright geographical indication and industrial design now usually it is either one intellectual property or multiple intellectual properties of this which would be applicable to your startup okay it is said that coca cola they have the maximum number of intellectual property registrations all of their uh, aspect the design of the bottle the logo the trademark the, the formulation of making the the syrup all of that all of these are copyrighted so for that matter coca cola is uh, very very strictly and stringently protected they have the strongest intellectual property now your you know, your startup might require a protection let's say suppose of patent and trademark it's an invention that you have come up with and the trademark is for your good that the final product you require a trademark for it right so you need to understand what are the kinds of intellectual property and then proceed with registration of that intellectual property okay just coming up with an idea is not enough we will see why that is so uh, in the next Reality obviously lesser than that of the original product, but the other way is by looking at the logo, the wordings of the logo. The quite common one is Adidas. Okay, your shoes they are being sold as Abibas, or the words are just changed so that look they look like it's the same brand. But if you have a closer um, inspection, then you realize that it's not the same product. So trademarks must be registered. Next is copyright. Copyright you get for your literary or artistic works. Okay. So all your books or your novels or even your formulas, your your recipes basically are copyrighted. The next is geographical indication. Uh, this is with regard to your product, which is based in a specific locality. Okay, the, the place of origin. For example, in Goa, we have geographical indication for khola chilies. Okay, for that matter, Moira bananas. These are uh, uh, certain GI tagged products. The next is industrial design. Now, industrial design constitutes the ornamental or the aesthetic aspect of an article. A very unique design, a unique shape. Even if the tag is removed, by looking at the bottle lying somewhere, you will say that, okay, yes, I know which uh, 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 soft drink was in this or which drink was in this bottle. So that is what your industrial design is. Now, why do you need to safeguard your uh, intellectual property? From your startup perspective, these are the four reasons why you need to safeguard your idea, your intellectual property. First is commercialization to earn from licensing. Now, when you protect your intellectual property, you get you you become the proprietor or you become the owner of that intellectual property. By being the owner, you can license out that uh, intellectual property for others to be used. And when you license out that product or license out that trademark, you certainly get revenue from it. So you can utilize your intellectual property to increase your revenue. The second is technological developments and blocking competition. Now, this is true in case of your patent. Now, when you're starting your startup, okay, in your startup, you would have some kind of product that you're manufacturing. Now, the process how you're manufacturing that product would be protected under your patents. Okay, so you are creating a technological revolution in that particular product, for example. And obviously, there would be competition for it. You are the you are coming up with this novel idea. You need certain protection. The the society, the government understands it, and it says that yes, you for a particular period of time. For example, there are limitations. You do not get the protection forever. In case of patents, twenty years of um, uh, uh, duration or the term of your protection of your patents is for twenty years. 
So for that period of time, you can generate as much revenue using this uh, your intellectual property as much as possible. The third is recognition and rewards. Certainly, once you have uh, you safeguard your idea, safeguard your intellectual property, uh, the rewards are by base of licensing or you know by by increasing your revenue, selling the product. And you get a recognition. Everybody realizes, okay, this is the brand. You 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 get some kind of goodwill in the market. The last is brand building and to raise funds. Now this is true in case of your trademark. In case of having a trademark for your startup, okay, or a product in your startup, everybody associates you with the trademark or your product with the trademark, and you create a brand value. At the same time, in case you want to sell your startup at a certain period of time, having an IP. Helps you to gain more returns or helps you to uh, amass more profits when when you sell it. In case you want to sell it, that is, or if you want investments, okay, the investors see that okay, this person is serious about his or her startup, okay, the person is protecting his or her intellectual property, which indicates that yes, our investment here would be safer. So you can easily uh, raise more funds if you have if you safeguard your idea or your intellectual property. Now these are the four reasons why you have to and you must safeguard your intellectual property, your idea, as soon as you come up with it. Okay. The next step is once your idea is in place, when your process, once your process is in place, in which you can start your startup the first is partnership second is uh, your uh, limited liability company it's it's a partnership of uh, this is an important point Leadership. Okay, so what are the uh, uh, so is a partnership? What an a sole structure with a control over his or her, and the best thing about the other uh, the owner enjoy. All the profits, but please remember, enjoy all the profits. All the liabilities are supposed to be. Uh, uh, the second is a uh, limited liability company, wherein the business structure is this business is most suited. Business is unstable or huge initiative that you are taking up with. Most of the uh, really are LLPs. Thing about this structure is that liability is limited assets. 
uh, and your business assets are considered separate and, you, and, and your personal assets not be utilized for recovery of debts which in your startup. Okay, so your startup is legal entity. Legal entity that is question. Oh, come together. Partnership is and it is governed by the partnership the Indian finally. Is Company is the one which is registered as the LC the Companies uh, Act. Now, each of these business types has own merits and demerits, and they come own sets of legal requirements and regulations. So, you should be firstly clear about what kind of uh, startup you want to engage in, what is the type of the business that you want to have, and then learn about that. Study it in detail, know the and before enter. Uh, uh, with the which you're supposed to know uh, is that of registration or incorporation of a startup. Basically, it is re you register your startup now. Okay, you register your business. There are two ways in which it can be done. First is by incorporating the startup. Uh, this step involves incorporating the business, as uh, we have seen, either as a partnership, as a limited liability partnership, or a private company. Now, in case of a partnership, it has to be registered with the registrar of firms of the state in which the firm is situated. In case of your LLP and private company, all designated partners and directors have to obtain director identification number and digital signature certificates and then incorporate it with the registrar. The next way is by registering with the startup in Yeah, so why is it necessary to register with Startup India Initiative? Now, this step usually is after incorporating the business. Now, the entire step, we will see why it is important now in a few seconds. But the entire step is very simple, simple and online. Now, after you have incorporated your business, you have to start uploading all the required documents uh, and, and fulfill the, the criteria which are required and which have been stipulated by Startup India Initiative. The startup, your startup will then get recognition of the Department of Promotion of Industries and Internal uh, Trade. And this recognition will help you in availing a number of benefits like tax exemptions for three consecutive years, access to high quality intellectual property services and resources, relaxation in public procurement norms, self certification under labor and environmental laws, and easy, uh, easy winding up process, and many other benefits would be. Uh, accrued by over a period of time. So as soon as you incorporate your store uh, yourself start up with the Startup India initiative. Now the next important legal uh, document that you have to know about which is uh, entered into or which is drafted by the uh, the founders of that the startup. You something which is called as the founders agreement okay a founders agreement is a document which specifies the operational details the executive compensation the conflict clauses and exit clauses uh, if any okay so all these important details what is going to happen in the future okay that is determined by your founders agreement Founders agreement also, uh, agreements also help in tackling us uncertain occurrences like death of a co-founder, resignation, retirement, which directly affects your growth or, or the, the, the setup of your startup. So for smooth running of your business firm or your startup, you require to have a founders agreement. The next step and the last step that you are supposed to know when it comes to the legal formalities is applying for a business license. Okay, licenses are important to run any kinds of businesses and depending on the nature and the size of your business, there are several kinds of licenses that are applicable to each and every startup or enterprise in India. 
business uh, licenses are basically legal documents that allow a business to operate while uh, the business registration is in the official process of uh, listing a business with the official registrar. Now, when we speak about licenses, permits, permissions, they are basically necessary to execute your idea. Okay. Usually people, uh, your founders, they do not have once again this legal knowledge. So they, um, they by, by default, they skip uh, getting a license, a particular kind of license and end up paying penalties. And it also to a certain extent, okay, this is borderline not registering or not, not having a license for your particular business is to a certain extent unethical and certainly illegal. So be aware, know the kind of uh, enterprise that you're going to set up, know what all licenses are required. For example, here, a restaurant requires multiple kinds of licenses, a food safety license, certificate of environmental clearance, prevention of food adulteration uh, uh, act, uh, under that a certificate is required, health trade license, uh, and an e-commerce company may require additional licenses such as wet registration, service tax, tax registration, professional tax registration, GST registration, and so on. Okay, so be aware when you when you are when you're starting your uh, startup apply for all the appropriate permits, permissions, and licenses. Now, with that, we come to the next part, which is the ethical steps which are involved in your uh, startup. Now, uh, let me warn you here, your ethical steps and your legal steps, to a certain extent, they overlap one another. So you will see that the first ethical step that a startup has to follow is quite a legal step. The word law is there present in this first step. So firstly, adherence to your labor laws. All the founders have to keep in mind their responsibility as an employer, and they must comply with all the required uh, labor law regulations. This is just like your license. When you're taking a license, it's a requirement. It's a requirement, right? It is for the benefit of the society, finally. Similarly, labor laws are these kind of uh, laws which are for the benefit of the society. It includes basic laws such as payment of wages, timely payment of wages, uh, wages provident fund and gratuity, gratuity which must be paid. Even your concept of workplace sexual harassment, creating awareness about it, uh, reducing it, eliminating it, maternity, maternity, maternity benefits, all of this come under this head. That is, this is the first ethical step that you as a startup have to take up. Now, another point with regard to your Startup India initiative here is that if you register under Startup India initiative, there are certain exemptions which are given to you uh, from certain labor laws. There are total nine labor laws uh, from which you get exemption for a period of uh, a year from date of incorporation or registration. Okay, however, for this, you have to sign a self declaration and be exempted from this laws. Some examples of these laws are the Industrial Dispute uh, Disputes Act, the Trade Union Act, the supposed to follow as the fact there needs to be employees contract. When you are an employer, you have to enter into contract with, with all your Uh, term concept of the contract of your service basically must be mentioned in the employee's contract once again this is in line with your labor laws your your uh, uh, benefit of the society and looking after your employees the next step is timely taxation okay pay your taxes on time this is uh, true not uh, not just in case of an individual you as a part of the society but you as a part uh, and parcel of the economic setup of the society that is you having a startup okay taxes and taxes are part and parcel of every business different businesses and operating sectors attract different kinds of taxes so you're supposed to know which taxes uh, are are applicable to your startup further you are supposed to be aware uh, take measures that you file your returns your your um, taxes are paid timely now, this will also help you to uh, gain certain benefits at the same time, uh, avoid and prevent uh, any liabilities or any fines. Now, this is a broad overview. These are some, some ethical concepts that you must be aware of. You, you have duty, you as the founder of a uh, startup, you have duty towards the customers. 
now startup should not uh, only focus on your economic activities but focus on activities which contribute to the society anything which is detrimental to the interest of your customers should not be done the startup should ex- accept feedbacks from your customers should take uh, after sales care service and assist your customers also keep in mind your duty towards your customer is with regard to protection of their privacy and their personal data any data you get from your customers you're supposed to uh, preserve it not share it with others that, that is the concept of privacy the next is your duty towards the environment okay uh, the the startups should have all these licenses and permits as we have seen previously at the same time they must ensure that their startup your startup basically does not have a negative impact on the environment the next is your duty towards the startup now when we speak about duty towards the startup your all your concepts about all the people who are working in your uh, in, in your startup the the uh, the person your personal interest they must be kept separate from your startup you do not try to the your own motives or your own agenda the new world separate entity your startup is a separate entity so that is your duty towards your startup duty towards your community finally why are you setting this startup work towards it do not try to uh, uh, to engage in fraudulent activities in order to maximize your profits and try to harm the community uh, as uh, consequently be ethical uh, follow the norms that you're supposed to do uh, contribute and give back to the society other Adher- adherence to labor laws is what we have already seen duty duties towards your employees is something we have already seen so all this ethical norms and legal norms are essential part of your startup you cannot um, say that okay i need to maximize my uh, revenue now so i will give a rest to the ethical steps and once i make a lot of profit then i will look at the community then i will look at my customers that is how that is not how it works okay so uh, i would session by to you all young budding entrepreneurs and founders of uh, startup being successful as an entrepreneur or founder of a setup consists of a lot more than simply making money and growing your venture success also means treating your employees customers and the community at large with honesty and respect uh, your success comes from the sense of pride which you feel which your customers feel when they engage in honest transactions not just because the law demands it but because the society and you want to enforce this concept of uh, uh, ethical norms or or being honest in your uh, enterprise success lies in knowing that the profit that you make does not come from tricking others uh, and thus your business ethics are what guide you to be a success to being a successful entrepreneur a, 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 a successful your customers your stake law for uh, patiently listening to this session we have now come to the end of the session